Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Halifax Raiders draft to glory franchise mode here in NHL 24. So in last episode we simulated the season, didn't have our best season once again we finished 45, 30, and 7 so kind of similar to where we were last year but we did make it back to the playoffs again for this second the last season which is exciting because obviously after last year winning a Stanley Cup we know that anything is possible and who knows maybe this team could go for a back-to-back -back Stanley Cup I don't think it's going to happen probably this year uh, but honestly you never really know with the sim engine so hoping that this team can put it together I honestly think our roster on paper looks a little bit better than last season I don't know if it's because of like the growth from Jacobson and stuff like that that's making our team look better the growth from Jennings having Erad in our lineup or something but something definitely looks a little bit stronger than last season also, our defensive core it doesn't still look that great on paper, but who knows, maybe it's good enough to cheese us to victory. But we know that we have the one-two punch of Zadorov and McKenzie. Obviously, we don't have Burkov anymore, uh, but McKenzie had a pretty good rookie season. Zadorov kind of struggled this year, which is kind of weird, posting the 897. So I'm just hoping that he kind of plays like he's done in the playoffs in the beforehand, because it seems like he's more of a playoff goaltender than, I'd say, a regular season one. Even though he did have some good regular season seasons, this year definitely was his worst of the bunch, but I think he could definitely do better in the playoffs like he did last year because he's only lost three games in regulation in his career in the playoffs through 22 games. So this guy could do a lot, so hopefully he has a good playoffs ahead of him, and hopefully that helps our team out in terms of maybe getting ourselves past this first round because obviously we're into the end game territory. If we lose in this episode, then technically we only have one season left of simulating uh, before we get to this end of this franchise mode, which is pretty crazy that it's already near the end. And then obviously we will be replacing the series with my Nashville throwback series uh, from 1999-2000, which should be pretty exciting to get into. But anyways, before we get into this playoff matchup with the Florida Panthers, let me get into your guys' comments and see what you guys have to say about last episode. So the first comment is from Souls, who says that Raymond contract is going to be a problem for the next GM. And yeah, it, Raymond had a little bit of a weird year. Like he almost hit 40 goals, which is nice, but didn't really pick up a lot of points in general. Uh, so I'm hoping that he can maybe do a little bit better playoff wise. But you can see 59 points from 83 last season. So his goal scoring fell off. His assists were around the same, but his goal scoring definitely fell off quite a bit. And we are paying him a boatload of money at 12 million bucks. So obviously... Whoever technically takes over for the GM role after me would have a very tough time with this contract, but at least it's not super long term. And yeah, hopefully we uh, get some good uh, playoff production from Chucky because last year he was very good with 18 points in those 21 games. And he's had a decent career playoff wise. It hasn't been anything insane, but he's had some other seasons where he's had like five points in five games, four goals. So he definitely could bring it this playoff run as well. And maybe he'll kind of justify that $12 million he is getting paid. The next comment is from Sanro Otaku says, A respectable season, all things considered. Though the only thing Chucky has victimized so far is your salary cap. Let's hope he and uh, Zidorov step it up in the playoffs again. Maybe it's time to take Lehman off the power play and give one of the younger guys a shot. Otherwise, go cheese, go. And uh, so we are going to probably do that by taking Lehman off the power play. Uh, he definitely declined a lot point production wise. So he actually is not even on the power play. Never mind. I thought he was on the power play, but uh, I guess not. So that's uh, already good, I guess. Maybe that's why his production dropped off so much is because we didn't actually have him on the power play. I thought I did, but... I guess the younger guys already took over, and that's maybe why E-Rat had such a good rookie season. But I do agree about Chucky victimizing our salary cap, and then also, yeah, hopefully he and Zadorov could definitely step it up for sure. And yeah, definitely go cheese go, because obviously we're kind of a cheese team again. Last year we were more cheese, and we won the Stanley Cup, so hopefully we could just keep on embracing that cheese identity. And the last and final comment is from Ezra Hamburg, who says, I was sick during the last season uh, sim and missed the franchise record update. At this point, I will wait till the final season sim video and give the final franchise regular season record update and the playoff record. And I appreciate that, Ezra. It's uh, very appreciative that you're uh, keeping track of these type of things because I find, like, no time to be able to keep track of those little stats. So I appreciate you doing that uh, for us in this series. It's been very helpful. And it's also kind of cool to look back on and see how our team has progressed throughout these, like, 25 seasons that we've done are going to be doing by the end of this series i should say anyways let's take a look at the florida panthers now and see what they're looking like i showed you guys them in last episode but i honestly kind of forget i know that last year we obviously played them in the playoffs in the second round so they're pretty much a similar roster i'm pretty sure to last time 
And yeah, basically, we need to contain this top line like we did last time we played them. It's going to be tough because Cesar Gamash is a beast. Lucas Hillman's really solid, and then Peterson also as well. Cornell was there last time I think we played them, but their depth has definitely fallen off a bit since we played them, I think, but they do still have that core intact. And obviously on defense, Chris Whitmore is a very good setup defender. You also have Commodore, who's dropped off a cliff over the last few years, and a bunch of other kind of like mid-defenders. So I'm hoping that we can kind of take advantage of the fact that their depth has definitely fallen off. They do have the good goaltending and sacrifice for that lack of defense, and also that depth defense uh, forward-wise, in like terms of two-way guys. But uh, huh, I'm trying to think if we should be able to beat them. I think we should be able to, but it's definitely going to be tough, especially with this top line, because we know what they could do. Peterson last year in the playoffs had yeah, 17 points in those 11 games he played. You had Hillman on uh, 14 points in 11 games, and Gamosh was on 15. So yeah, that entire top line last year when we knocked him out, was doing a lot of damage so if we could contain that top line we have a chance at winning they only finished 49 25 and 8 so it is a little bit lower than we're used to seeing them so um they might uh, be able to actually do some damage this year who knows we also have toronto tampa which means fpz's in the playoffs still rangers and canes and then caps and blue jackets and Western Conference, you have the Battle of Alberta, which is cool, Anaheim and Vegas, Colorado, San Jose, and St. Louis and Nashville. Okay, let's get into this and see what ends up happening. See if we're able to win some games on the road and continue to embrace that cheese status. And hopefully we get good goaltending like we've been getting the last few years in the playoffs. Because we've had two good seasons in a row goaltending-wise. Because even the year we got reverse swept in the first round by Tampa... We actually played really good in terms of our goaltending, so our goaltending is definitely something that could potentially win us some games. So here we go. Game one in Florida. Can we get a win on the road? At least win one of these two games on the road. That would be a good way to start it off. So here we go. First period of game number one. One nothing us. Hey, good start. Ozens opens the scoring. Six minutes in. Shots are thirteen to eleven. So that's a good first period. And that's also a good first period in terms of goaltending. That's exactly kind of what I was trying to hope for is good goaltending. But obviously we need that offense to kind of do what it did last year because we had very good depth scoring last year when we won the cup. So that's something that we need to work towards again is good depth scoring and also playing good in front of our goaltender who usually is a brick wall. Let's see if we can get some insurance in the second period to make me feel a little bit safer because we know that Florida could just all of a sudden pop off for a ton of goals because they definitely have that offensive threat. Second period. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, see, I knew that was going to happen eventually. Mauricio McKenzie's in net. That's uh, not great. I don't know if we got an injury to Zadorov early or if uh, maybe it was a minor injury thing that Zadorov came out for. Regardless, the youngster Mauricio McKenzie's getting a chance to play, which is not great. Uh, Gamash scores on the power play to tie the game up. Then they get another power play goal from Bus. So our penalty kill off to a little bit of a rough start, but a huge answer there. Almost 20 seconds later, actually 21 seconds later from Chucky. So good to see Chucky getting on the board like we were saying before. Hopefully he kind of justifies that $12 million with his playoff performance. Shots are 26-21 in favor of Florida. It's a 2-2 game. Can we get the lead back in this third period? Let's see what happens. Come on, boys. It's been back and forth so far here in this game. Penalty kill. Nicely done, guys. Good to see you guys killing off a penalty after last period. Final 10 minutes of this third period. Another penalty kill. Stop taking penalties. They get their third power play goal of the night. Bust with his second two. Can we tie this game up? Yes, we can. Alan Lehman. Huge goal there from the captain to tie this game up at three. And we're going to overtime in game number one. Last year in the playoffs, we went to a ton of overtimes, at least in round two, round three, I think it was. Um, so we do have the experience playing in these overtime situations, but it's been a very kind of back and forth type of game right now. Anybody could win. Shots are 37-32 in favor of Florida. Can we find a way to give Mauricio McKenzie his first career playoff victory? Who wants to be that guy for us? Obviously, we can't call an at in anymore because he's up in the press box with Wilm watching this game right now. So I don't know who I want to call on. Let's uh, call on Marty Cardwell of all people. Let's see what happens in overtime. Come on, boys. And we do a score immediately, and it's Chucky. Let's go, Chucky. He took to heart that we uh, told him that he's getting paid too much. And he has scored two goals in game one. We win 4-3. 
in Florida, and that's a great way to start off this first round. Let's go. Final shots for 37 to 33. So Chucky terrorizing the Panthers in game one. That's a great way to show that you're worth that type of money. So Ozens from Colborn, Raymond from Hamline and Cardwell, Layman from Booze and Richter, and there is Chucky again from Hamline in this time around. Huh. So we were up one nothing, then we're down two one, then we're tied at two, then we're down three two, then we're tied at three, and then we win four three. Yeah, very back and forth game. I'll take it. I don't like our penalty kills play in that game, but I will definitely take that first win. We need to be a bit more disciplined too, not taking penalties if they're going to score so much. Because we took, uh, yeah, a lot of penalties. Layman and Cardwell both had two minor penalties, and you had four other guys on penalties. So uh, we took way too many penalties in that first game. Like if we go to penalties, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minor penalties. We got to be more disciplined for sure. And uh, Layman was pretty lucky. He got a checking from behind minor. But that kept him in the game, though. And then he was able to tie the game up late for us and get it to over an overtime scenario where we won. So, yeah, we just got to be more disciplined and also play better on that PK because we know they are very dangerous. They scored three goals on seven power play opportunities, it seems like. So, is Burnaby in the playoffs? They are not. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they missed for the first time in a while. Uh, let me go adjust our penalty kill lines maybe after that first game because three power play goals against... If Florida continues to do that, they might be able to find ways to consistently do that and score on us a lot. And hey, I just realized Reese Della Rivera has lost his gold ability, which I kind of uh, predicted, I think, last playoff, said he was going to lose it. I didn't even realize. So we don't even have a single gold ability player on our team anymore. Even Zadorov doesn't have one, so that is very weird. I think that's the first time in quite a long time where we never had a gold ability player. Uh, let's see, penalty kill-wise, what I want to change up. I don't really know if there's anything I want to change up too much about it. Richter doesn't fit the penalty kill that well. What if I gave... Does Erat have penalty kill time? He does not. Hmm. Let's go with Erat in the penalty kill. I know he's a sniper, but he fits it better. So that's uh, what we're going to do is just throw Erat on the penalty kill instead of Richter and hope that that helps us out. Erat had a really good rookie season, so might as well give him a little bit more ice time. And see maybe if he could pick up some short-handed goals for us or something like that. But that was a pretty solid first game, I'd say, for the most part. Like I said, except for that penalty kill, because all three of their goals came on the power play. So we got to be much better in terms of that. Also, a little bit more discipline, too, if we can. There's nothing I can really do for discipline unless I'm scratching those guys that are taking a lot of penalties. But obviously, that's not something I'm going to be doing. But that was a good first game. Let's see what we could do in game two as we're still in Florida. Can we take a 2-0 series lead headed home that would be amazing. I'm already happy that we took one game at least on the road. First period of game number two. Two nothing Florida. Yikes. Another power play goal from Bus. Bus has three power play goals in two games against us. They have four power play goals in the series, so uh, that's not great. And uh, I wouldn't put Zadorov on that one in the first period. We got outshot 15 to nine, so we need to generate more chances and kind of limit it. There's. Shawden also scores for them, so hopefully we can have a better second period and maybe get back into this game. We don't need to score necessarily two goals in the next period, but if we could score one, that might give us some breathing, uh, not breathing room, but some uh, new life or something for the third period to get back into this game. So let's have a strong second period and maybe claw ourselves back into this game. Second period. Still 2 nothing Panthers. That's not what I was hoping for. I mean, we're still down only by two goals, which is good. But still, it's much harder to do it in 20 minutes rather than 40. It would have been nice to chip at least back into this game a little bit. But uh, we're being outshot 27-24. Looks like their goaltending and their defense is having a good game. Do we have a response in this third period to maybe get back into this? We've had comebacks in the playoff before. So who knows? Maybe we'll have a strong third period. Let's see what happens. Come on, guys. It would be nice to win both these games here on the road. But I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Can Chucky find a way to score? Jacobson does. It's 2-1. Let's go, Jacobson. Penalty kill for us. Nicely done. Power play for us. We do not score. Okay. We can score. Come on, guys. We need one more goal to tie this up and bring it to OT again. Can we find it? No, we cannot. Cesar Gamash with the dagger, and we lose 3-1 in Game 2. I wouldn't say that's a terrible game, but our offense definitely should have done a little bit more. Uh, but uh, their goaltender fan themselves... 40 saves for Zadorov is pretty good too, so I don't mind the performance. 
if we wouldn't have allowed that power play goal, it would have only been a 2-1 game. So our power play, once again, our penalty kill needs to be a much better in terms of uh, keeping the puck out of the net. Jacobson with the only goal from Del Rovere. Let me take a look how much penalties did we take in this one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my goodness. We're taking way too much ticky tack penalties. Actually, one was a fighting major, and I just burped when I talked, but oh well. Um, one was a fighting major, so actually it was four minor penalties. But uh, Kavanov also got into a fight with Smithson trying to spark some comeback for our team. Yeah, Rolo was really good, so hmm. I don't know what we need to necessarily do. At least it's a 1 1 series headed home. Because if we lost both these games, then we'd be in a bad spot. So it's good that we at least took one game on the road. But now we're going to need to be winning also on our home ice, which I think we could definitely do. But we need to find better offense than last game for sure. Because we only have now five goals in two games. So we're scoring like two and a half goals a game, which is not crazy. They have scored six goals now. So they're technically outscoring us after these first two games. Let me go to lines here and see what we could do. If there's anything I could address. Raymond dropped back down to an 85 from an 86, which is interesting. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what we could do here. Nah, that's not going to do anything better. Uh, I almost feel like putting Lehman as a fourth liner. He does have the one goal, though, which is good. I'm trying to think. I did really like actually Erat's play in his rookie season. I could move him up and put Richter down to the fourth line. I think that's what I'm going to do is get Erat a little bit higher in the lineup. I know Richter technically won the Conn Smythe last year, but Erat's ne the next guy for that spot potentially. So, And yeah, Zadorov has been once again pretty damn good. Really good save percentage. Goals against is a little higher, but he still has been really good. And Mauricio McKenzie has been okay. He's been okay. Okay, I think... It <clears throat> Okay, I think we are ready to go for the next game, and now we need to find ways to win on home ice. Because if we can win both these games, we set ourselves up for a good spot. <clears throat> if we lose both these games somehow, then we're in a bad spot. If we basically take one, lose one, we're in basically the exact same spot we're right now. So let's hope that we can win some games on our home ice and take advantage of that, considering now technically we have the advantage going here. So here we go. Game number three. Let's have a response to the last game. Play better defensively. I mean, it was an okay defensive effort last game, but let's play it better defensively, and let's try and find our offense again if we can, like we did in game one. First period of game number three. one nothing Panthers. Now, they're trying to find them. They're, they're starting to find their defensive play quite a bit. We're outching them 14-6, to six, so Rolo all of a sudden is playing really, really good. We only have one goal in the last four periods of hockey. So we need to be trying to find ways to score a little bit more often. I know we had a lot of shots in the first period, so that doesn't justify really that much. But we did actually have opportunities, but we haven't been able to score so far. So it would be nice to have a good response in the second period if possible. Because obviously, if we're still trailing going into the third, it's just going to be harder to come back in 20 minutes rather than 40 so Peterson with their goal in the first period. Can we find a way to tie this game up in the second or grab that lead? Second period. Still one nothing Panthers. Damn, man. Our offense is flat right now. Only one goal in five periods. Hmm. I might have to actually make some offensive adjustments. <clears throat> shots are even, but it's a one nothing game. So they had a better uh, second period, it seems like, in terms of shots. But we're still down by that one goal. Definitely got to find a way to tie this one up somehow in the third period because I don't really like our lack of offense since game one right now. Because obviously that's uh, not uh, good when you're not scoring. That means you might end up just not scoring again almost at this point. So let's get into the third period, see if we can find a way to tie this game up, bring it to at least an overtime. But we need to find ways to score goals here. Come on, boys. You got this. We're in front of our fans. Let's do this for them. Let's tie this up. Let's go, Bernard Boucher. That's a big goal. Power play for us. We do not score a penalty kill. Nicely done, penalty killers. But a good goal there from Boucher. <clears throat> Final few minutes of this third period tied at one. And Ricardo Richter gets demoted to the fourth line. The former Conn Smythe winner gives us the 2-1 lead. And we are going to seal this game with a victory 2-1. Not the best offensive effort, but we did have our offense show up in the most important time. 
We outshot them 32-31, and we win by a goal. Let's go, guys. Zadorov always gives us a chance to win these games, too, which is nice. So, shout out to Zadorov. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the player stats here, or the stat line stuff. Boucher from Cardwell, and then we had... <clears throat> Richter from Cracknell and Colborne. So, interesting to see those guys score their first goals of the playoffs in such a big game. And like I said, Zadorov literally gives us a chance to win games every time. So, without him, I don't know if we'd be technically the type of team we are. But with him, he's definitely helped us win in these playoffs as he outperforms Rolo by a little bit. He gets first star of the game. And Richter got third star with the game-winning goal. So, good to see Richter on the board. And getting that goal, like I said, he won the Consumite last year, so he does pick up his play a little bit, it seems like, in the postseason. Okay, so we have a 2-1 series lead. We're still on home ice. I think that was a good uh, second game. Obviously, the offense was a little bit quiet, uh, but I'm not going to make any offensive adjustments after a win. So let's just get right into game four and see if we could take a 3-1 series lead on the Panthers, or are we going to be back to square one again and have a best of three scenario? Here we go. Game four. Let's do this, boys. Let's do it for our fans. Let's build off that last period we just had. First period of game number four. Scoreless. Hey, I'll take it. Good first period. We outshot them 14-9. to nine. Obviously, it's kind of scary to see our offense not doing anything really other than the two goals last game. But uh, obviously, the defensive play is kind of where we're strong in in terms of goaltending and all that. So if we're able to keep these games close, at least, we have a chance. So it would be nice, obviously, for our offense to get going a little bit more, though, because obviously, lack of offense doesn't mean you're going to win all the time. But it would be nice for our offense to be a little bit more consistent. And it is also good, though, to see our defense and goaltending being as consistent as it is. Let's see if we have an answer in the second period. Second period. Two, nothing else. Let's go. Layman and Chucky. Chucky hasn't scored since, I guess, game one. But that is a huge period for us. We're up two, nothing. We're out shooting him 30 to 17 now. So we generated a lot of offense in that period. We only scored two goals, which is kind of surprising. But that's uh, better than last game for sure. Because last game we only finished with two goals. So to score two goals in the second period here is nice. Obviously, it would be nice to get some insurance in the third period, though, because we know the Florida Panthers could just strike pretty much out of nowhere. Let's see what happens in this third period, see if we're able to get some insurance and lock this game down. Come on, boys. Let's get that third goal. Power play for us. We do not score on it. That's okay. Power play again for us. It's a five on three, and we do not score on it. Our power play has really struggled in our penalty kill, too, so special teams need to be a bit better. Watton scores for Florida to get them on the board. Not ideal. Final few minutes of this third period. Frag a pain of all people. Let's go. Caden and Ozens. A power play empty net goal. Maybe that's what we need for our power play going. We win 4-1. to one, And we are one win away from the second round. Let's go. Huge. Another good performance from Zadorov. He only had to face 26 shots though this time around. So it's not as good as prior games. But still, he only allows one goal in this one. So Lehman from Erat and Booz, Raymond from Boucher and Hamelinen, Fragapain from Ozens and Jacobson, and then you had Ozens on the power play empty net goal from Richter and Jacobson. Nice. Nice indeed. And yeah, Zadorov has been very good in his first round. He's definitely giving us a chance to win every single game. Ozens the second star and Raymond the third star. So we are one win away from the second round. Our only loss was uh, not by much either, 3-1. to one. And, oh, no. <clears throat> we have just lost our best defenseman, Marty Cardwell, with a mild concussion out till April the 27th. It's not too long term, but that's a substantial blow to our defense and might also make us worse in front of Zadorov, which is not great. Who did I put in the lineup again? Because I don't even remember who our depth defenseman is. I got to double check on that. We might have to make it some adjustments because of that, too. Let's see. Who is it? Oh, it puts Sexsmith in. Oh, yeah, that's right. That is right. We had an injury to Mauricio Booz, too. I completely forgot about that. So that injury to Mauricio Booz at the end of the season also hurts us quite a bit. We are going to have to call up a defenseman from the minors unless we want to run Sexsmith as a defenseman, which I don't think is a good idea with that 79 defensive awareness. So 
We're going to have to call up probably Burrish, who was with us on the cup winning roster last season. So yeah, we're going to call him up. Because obviously right now we need an actual defenseman in that spot. So Burrish will come up and play some defense for us. And obviously he'll get sent back down uh, once uh, the uh, guys are back to full health. But oh man. Our defensive core definitely is not going to have a fun time with uh, these low-end defenders. Because now we literally have our best defenseman's on their third pairing. I'm going to put Ram all the way on the top pairing, obviously, because he's our best defenseman But right now. And Burrish will play on the top six. But our defensive core is very cheesy. And it's kind of scary. But at least uh, Cardwell's injury is not super long-term. But still, it does hurt to lose him for now. And I'm going to be excited once Mauricio Boos returns because those two guys last year were dominant defensively in the playoffs. So without them, it's definitely a pretty weird-looking team. But we're one win away from the next round at least, so hopefully we could just find to have one win here and close out this series. I think we're going to keep the team the exact same just because there's no adjustments to make other than that injury. So let's see. Can we close out the Florida Panthers on their home ice and get ourselves to the next round or is this injury to Cardwell going to play a major factor in the series because obviously he does not return till the next round so can we close out the Panthers let's see if we could do it we've knocked him out before we knocked him out last year in the second round can we knock him out in the opening round here and continue to be that cheese team first period of game number five Two, nothing us. Let's go. Jacobson and Hamelinen. Great way to start it off. So our offense is definitely getting a little bit better here over these last two games. Shots are 12 to 9 in favor of Florida, but we're up by a pair of goals. So that's a good first period. Another good period in net as well from Zdorov. He's been probably our best player by far here in the playoffs, I'd say. And last year as well, he could have won the con Smythe, but he didn't. Let's see if he could have another good period and play good in front of him as well. Hopefully we can maybe get a couple more goals just because we know Florida has that offensive capability to come back in games. Second period. 2-2. Two, two. That's what I was talking about. That's not great. I don't put those on Zadorov. Courtnell into Mander score. Shots are 27-18 in favor of Florida. So they're out shooting us by quite a large margin. But it is a 2-2 two -two game. So Zadorov still keeping us in this game. He does not blow in the lead yet. Can we find a way to get that lead back that we had in the first period? Because that was a good start, but that second period, not so much. Let's see if we can grab the lead back. Come on, guys. Hey, immediately to start the third, Ricardo Richter scored, but then Gamash scored and Finnerty scores, and Florida has now a lead. But we do answer back. It's the rookie Erat to make it 4-4. This is a scary game right now. I don't like uh, our defensive play in front of uh, the goaltending, but that's obviously probably due to Cardwell being injured. It's a 4-4 game. Are we going to another overtime penalty kill late in the game? And we do force overtime. We managed to at least kill off that penalty. Because that was a little bit nerve-wracking. I thought they were going to score in the final few seconds. But shots are 46-29 in favor of Florida. It's a 4-4 game. So Zadorov, even though he's allowed four goals, he's made 42 saves to keep us in this game and give us a shot at potentially winning this series. The question is, who wants to be the hero for our team in overtime? The last time we were in overtime, I think, was game number one, if I remember right. And that's where we won by a final score of four to three. So, who wants to be the hero? Let's uh, shout out to Lehman, because maybe he's going to come through since he's the old guy. And he's been through all these playoff experiences before. Um, or let's say maybe Ricardo Richter, considering he's been uh, picking up his play as of late. So I'm going to say Richter or Lehman would score for us, but I don't know. For Florida, it's probably going to be one of their top guys. It's the way it works usually. So can we get the win in OT and close out the Florida Panthers? Let's see what happens. Come on, guys. Don't let them back into this game. Penalty kill still in overtime. We killed that rest of it off. Nicely done. So I guess they carried into overtime from a regular strength or regular uh regular time or whatever you want to call it <laughs> penalty kill again stop taking penalties boys nicely done final few minutes are we going to a double overtime situation yes we are they have 60 shots on goal holy crap that might be the most i've ever seen in a sim game i don't think i've ever seen a 60 shot game by any team but zadorov is keeping us in it he's made 56 saves so this might be one of the best performances we've ever seen from a goaltender on our team 
there's been a hundred combined shots and only eight goals, which is kind of crazy. Can we find a way to cheese them and win this game in overtime despite them out shooting us by 20 shots? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. They're actually like pretty much like, yeah, we have like two thirds of their shots. Damn, that's weird. Can we find that OT winner? Who wants to be that guy? I'm going to also shout out Fragapane randomly because I feel like he could be just a random cheese guy. So let's see what happens in overtime number two. We know it's going to end quick. Come on, boys. Please get the win for Zadorov. Yes, let's go. We get the win for Zadorov. It's Bernard Boucher. And we win on our first shot of double overtime 5-4. That's a 56 uh, save performance from Zadorov. We have cheesed out the Panthers in round one. Let's go. Without Zadorov, I don't think this would be possible, but our team has managed to do it. It was a 1-1 series, and then we went three straight games. couple OT winners. That's a huge goal there to send us to the next round. Let's go. So Hamelainen from Boucher and Raymond. Jacobson from Ozens and Del Rivera. Richter from Jennings. Erat from Lehman and Fragapane. And the game-winning goal, Boucher from Hamelainen and Jacobson. Our penalty kill also drastically has improved, I think, since game one or so. Or game two, even, for that matter. Because, like, we killed off some big penalties there. Like, that late high-sticking double minor by Booz could have cost us the game. But we killed that off. And then we also killed off a penalty from Mangone in overtime. It still won. So, our penalty kill is doing much better than it was at the earlier stages. Three stars of the game, Cortnell for them, Boucher for us, and Peterson for them as well. So I'm kind of surprised that Zadorov didn't get a star based on how much shots he faced. He didn't actually play the entire game. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. So Mauricio McKenzie came in for the final 32 minutes, so I guess Zadorov got tired, and he wasn't playing the best. And then McKenzie came in and made 21 saves on 21 shots, so... Shout out to both of our goalies combining for a victory. We'll actually probably go to McKenzie more so. But yeah, they had a ton of shots in that game. Like, well, let's take a look at the shot chart here. We all got a shot 12 9 in the first period, 15 9 in the second, 19 to 11 in the third period, 14 to 12 in the first overtime. And in, uh, it doesn't show about the second overtime. So I guess it was 14 to 12 in both overtimes combined. But that's craziness. That is craziness. What a win for this team. You just got to continue to believe in the cheese and anything could happen. That's a really nice first round. Not the best offensive effort. Uh, actually, the last two games, I guess, were good. So I would say in general, a pretty solid effort from the team. I'll look at the team stats as well just to see if our power play and stuff has been struggling. But that's a pretty nice first round to knock out a good team like Florida. So in terms of our player stats, Boucher on four points in five games. He was great, plus four. Richter on four points as well, really good. Erat on two points, not bad. Started to pick it up a little bit over those last two games. Left wing wise, Hamelainen on five points has been good. Ozens on four points. Lehman on three points. Booze on two assists. Right wing wise, Jacobson on five points. Raymond on four points. Delaware and Colburn on two points. And Jennings on one. So we're pretty similar to last year, actually, in terms of stats, to be honest, because our depth scoring looks pretty good throughout our lineup after the first round. So I like that a lot. Uh, defensively, Fragapane on two assists and a plus five, which is pretty good for a 77 overall defenseman. I'll take that. Cardwell obviously only played the four games because he was injured for that last game. But two assists in four games and a plus four is pretty damn good. We had Cracknell with one assist. Bursch played one game and was plus two. So Hudson Bursch did his job. Uh, Mangonen, Kavanaugh, and Ramo had no points, but they were all plus as well. And then goaltending wise... Our goaltending was phenomenal again in the first round. Our goaltending has been great these last three playoffs, and uh, it's continuing to be like that. Zadorov has a 936 with a 2.34, and even Mauricio McKenzie has been great with his team, a 945 save percentage in his first two playoff games. So very, very nice to see that, and we're going to be heading to the next round. Any minus players on our roster? No. So I'd say pretty similar to last year. In terms of how our team is simulating so far up to this point. I do also want to take a look at the team stats. So just to see what's been going good for us. Actually I could take a look at that I guess when we are playing. See who we are playing next round. So we'll do that first. Who are we playing in round two? And shouldn't Cardwell be back for next round? I think he will be. At least I hope he will. And then we're also waiting on uh, Mauricio Booz too. Uh, oh, it looks like he's going to be missing game one. 
for Cracknell and Mauricio Booz is going to be out as well for the beginning of this next round. Because if we go to the injury report, let's see. So I think Cardwell's out to the 27th. Yeah, Cardwell will be back for the next game. Booz will be back for the game after that. So good to see that both of our defenders will be back soon and will be back to full health because those two guys are our best defensive defensemen kind of things. So kind of sucks though that we have to be without them in the first uh, the first beginning of the second round. But we are going to be taking on the other Floridian team, the Tampa Bay Lightning, once again. Seems like every year we play both Florida teams. And obviously they have FPZ still and all that type of thing. Oh, I know. Did FPZ retire? No, I don't think he did, right? I don't think he retired. If he retired, I might be mistaken. Joel Weber probably retired, but I don't know if FPZ retired. I can't remember if he did or not last season. Hmm. But anyways, uh, you also have Rangers, Capitals, St. Louis, Colorado, Edmonton, and Vegas. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, comparison regular season-wise and playoff-wise for both of our teams. And then, obviously, we'll take a look at their rosters. So... Tampa finished a little bit above us. They were four points above us in the season. But we did just knock out the division winners, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we scored more goals than they did. They were better, def actually worse defensively. So we were better offensively and defensively this season than the Tampa Bay Lightning, but they finished above us. Uh, however, they did have a better power play, and they also had a better penalty kill. So their special teams are better. We're better 5-on-5. Five five. They're 5-3-2 five, and two going into the playoffs. In terms of stats during the playoffs, let's take a look at this. This is where we're going to be able to actually find out how we did as well. So Tampa was 4-1 in the first round, so they won in five games just like Gus, scoring 4.2 goals per game to our 3.2, so they're better offensively right now. Uh, we are the exact same defensively, though. So pretty similar teams so far. Our power play was tragic in the first round, going 1-19. for 19. Our only power play goal was that empty netter from Austin, so... Our power play needs to be much better in the next round because Tampa's has been pretty good up to this point. Uh, and once again, their penalty kill is good too, and our penalty kill hasn't been. So kind of similar to the regular season in a sense where both teams uh, are kind of playing up to their special teams percentage. So our special teams definitely could get adjusted, but we could also just leave them and hope that they correct themselves too because they have all the skill in the world on them, I guess. But, so, we're going to be taking on Tampa. Let's take a look at their roster and see what they have. We've obviously played them a ton in the series, so that's probably similar to the last time we played them, but it could have went through some changes as well. And, yeah, FEZ is still playing at 35. He's dropped down to an exact top nine, so this might be the last season you see of FPZ. He had 80 points this season, was minus 14. So, Tampa might have got a little bit lucky getting into the playoffs in a sense. But he's dropped down to an 85. You also have Craig Frazier and Jay Cooperman. Okay. Mikhail Arvidsson, Malachi Hughes, Warren Moss. Third line, Laurent Jeffreyon, Tony Peltola, Israel Leopold. And a fourth line of Cesar LaHue, Jacob Bobrovsky, and Damian Andrews. I think some of these guys are new. Like, I don't think I remember Jeffreyon. Yeah, Jeffreyon came over from Winnipeg. I feel like I don't recognize Arvidsson either. Yeah, he came over from Minnesota. Had a really good season with them. Was Cooperman with them last year? No, he was not. He came over from Philadelphia, so they brought in a lot of new pieces, it looks like. He is also returning from injury. Uh, defensively, Caden Chance and Kai Yolkin are still there, so that guys, those two guys were definitely there last time. John Kern is definitely new. He was a former pick of theirs, so I guess he just made it to the NHL today, or the season. Logan Orpik was there last time, I'm pretty sure. Radic Majewski, I think, was there. And Dominic Rammer. Since they have a guy named Rammer on their team, who knows, we might get cheesed. <laughs> and then goalie-wise, they have Kyle Legacy and Nikita Tulipov. Tulipov's dropped off a lot. He is still there, though, which he's been there his entire career, I'm pretty sure, at this point. We've definitely played him before when he was a starter, but now he's a backup, which is interesting. Almost, uh, He's just over 400 career wins, too which is pretty impressive. Kyle Legacy was drafted actually by them, and this is his third NHL season, so I guess he was the backup last year when we played them, I think. Scratch-wise, they have David Sparks, Marvin Trainer, and Taylor Crowder. So, going to be probably another tough matchup, I'd say, because they have very good center depth. Their winger depth is decent, too. Like They are definitely a pretty balanced team on paper. 
I'd say their weakest point is obviously this top six pairing. So hopefully we could take advantage of the weak top six pairing, find ways to score goals and win the game. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our uh, Halifax Raiders Draft the Glory franchise mode. So in next episode, we'll take it to the second round of the playoffs against the Tampa Bay Lightning as we look to continue to cheese teams and maybe get ourselves another Stanley Cup before the series ends. So anything down below, and I'll see you guys next time.